Quiet, please. Quiet, please. American Broadcasting Company presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for today is called Deezer's Cellar. I looked at Marlena. Marlena looked at me when we heard this old guy talking about Beezer's Cellar. Get a load of this, Marlena, I said. And she picked up a French fry and ate it very quiet while we listened to the old guy. He was sounding off to another old guy. And the other old guy couldn't get a word in edgeways. So this here Beezer, they always called him Six Fingers Beezer, see, on account of he had six fingers on each hand. He never did build his house. He got the cellar dug, and then he up and hung himself in it. Well, I don't know why rightly, but... Uh, there was some talk about the cellar being dug into a cursed ground. Well, I want to tell you, there's been mighty odd doings up there, I, right, George? Up at Beezer's cellar. What? Well, fires and lights at night. And don't you tell me Foxfire. I've seen Foxfire, and I know it when I see it. And this here ain't Foxfire. Hmm? Sixty-odd years ago. And moans and hooting and hollering all over the place at night. And trees are waving their branches when they ain't no wind. No, sir, that's a real deserted place. You couldn't get me up there with a ten-foot pole. That there place is haunted, sonny. I want another look there. No, sir... Ghosts and spirits and crawling things that hoot and holler. They ain't in my line. You getting that, Marlena? Gosh, no. Ain't been up there since I was a kid in short pants. A click of us went up there one afternoon in the fall, and we thought we seen a skeleton laying down there on the floor of the cellar, and we cut and run. Never stopped till we got to the C and A tracks. Yes, sir, Sonny. Uh, thank you for the root beer. That there's a place to shun, and by golly, people shun it. Well, hey, it's right out past the cemetery, where you turn off to the strict fadden road. But it'd take quite a lot of finding. About three mile east, there's a big elm tree that was struck by like... Come on, Marlene, I said. I we sort of drifted out of the place. The car was parked up under a big tree by the side of the road. Pete was sitting there with the P-38 pistol he brought back from the war. With his feet on the suitcase with the $82,000. We stopped to count it on the side street in Wilmington on the way down from Chicago. We watched the state cops go on past us down 66. Then we switched the license plates and jogged on after him. Pete wasn't taking any chances. He had the snoot of that P-38 in our faces the minute we walked up. You uh, ought to make some kind of noise or something. I might not let you have it. Put the gun away for a minute and move over. Get in, Marlene. Did you bring me a sandwich? Barbecued pork, are they? I could eat it raw. What's cooking? Stanley's got an idea. What now? You're scared of ghosts, Pete. I ain't scared of anything. Well, that's good. What's this about ghosts? We might run into a couple of them where we're going. An old man with six fingers on each hand. Oh, a cop? He hanged himself 60 years ago. What is all this double talk? Quit hollering and eat your sandwich. Listen, what are you figuring on? I found a place to leave the bag with the money for a while. While things cool off. Leave the bag? What'd you think I was going to do? In that cellar? What cellar? Stanley, are you crazy? Listen, how'd you like to let me in on this, huh? Listen, this is a haunted cellar, see? 
The old man says nobody ever goes there. They're scared to go there. So am I. Oh, can up, Marlena. There ain't anything to be scared of. Only ghosts. Well, you can always go riding around the countryside if you want to, asking some hick cop to take us. It's always the way with you amateurs. I'm no amateur. I shot the guys, didn't I? Who told you to shoot? Who told you which ones to shoot? Well, what are you beefing about? I didn't say anything. Well, I wished I'd never got into this. For a nice chunk of $82,000, you wish that. Well, but do we have to do it this way, Stanley? You think of a better way? Where is this place? A few miles from here. What are we waiting for? That's my boy. Oh, we won't have to stay around there long, will we, Stanley? Why, listen, baby, you think I'd go there at all if I didn't have a hot suitcase to take care of? Leave right away. I will. <laughs> we all will. Whether old Six Finger shows up to scare us or not. <laughs> Don't, Stanley. Which way, Stan? Well, the old fellow said something about a road. Uh... Stick Faden Road. Well, well, look now, but the reason I was asking is there's a motorcycle coming down the road back there. But where? I was just kind of interested in our next move. Not that I haven't got ideas of my own. Now, put that gun away. I was only going to ask him a question. But he didn't have to ask him a question. Marlena stepped out of the car, and she walked right up to the man in the blue suit, and she said, How do I get to Sreek Faden Road, officer? Now, the officer told her, just as polite as the head waiter. <laughs> He'd have been awful surprised if he'd known what was pointing at him while he was being so nice to the cute little redhead. Eh, yeah, what do you know? No one hurt him, I always say. And we relaxed. Well, so we found the road all right. We drove along slow, little old Model A Ford with Indiana license plates. And we were pretty quiet. I don't know what Pete was thinking about in Marlena, but I know what I was thinking about. Trees hanging low over the road. Trees that moved their branches when there wasn't any wind. And lights in the night that wasn't foxfire. Uh, whatever foxfire is. And pretty soon there was a great big old elm tree alongside the road, and it looked as if it had been struck by lightning. So we stopped. Then there wasn't any trees waving their branches or any funny noises. But we found Beezer's cellar. I wish we hadn't. There was the elm tree that was struck by lightning. And there was a fence that we busted down. There was a kind of path. Oh, there had been a path once. And it was all I could do in the dark to bust my way through the underbrush with a flashlight. <laughs> and Marlene and Pete waiting in the car ready to go into a smooching act if an inquisitive cop pulled up. <laughs> smooching. With a hiney pistol aimed under his arm over the side of the car. It was a lot easier getting the $82,000 than it was crawling through the bushes looking for Beezer's cellar. I pretty near fell into it. It didn't smell very good. There was water in spots in the bottom. Man, it looked haunted enough. Kind of felt my back hair coming up, but I said, yeah, well, it's better than one of these little iron rooms they got down at Stateville. And I went back after Pete and Marlena. We run the car off the road, hoping nobody would see it. We lugged the suitcase back through the underbrush. I jumped down. Pete and Marlena climbed down after me. Good deal, huh? Looks haunted, all right. I don't like this, Stanley. Well, let's stash the bag and get out of here. How are you going to do it? We'll dig a hole, jerk, and bury it. What with? Well, didn't you... Oh, first. Oh, wait a minute, Stanley. I see something over there against the wall. Flash the light. I thought I saw it when I climbed down. Huh. A shovel. Huh. Ain't that convenient. Maybe the ghosts left it here. Cut that out. <laughs> Scare you, kid? Well, cut it out. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Marlena. Uh, hold the light, Pete. Uh, no, turn it out quick. There's a car coming. Okay. Make 
so much noise. You want a dig? I'll hold the light. Wait. What's the matter? Shut up. I thought I heard somebody. Go on, dig. Yeah. Pick up the bricks. Okay. Let me hold the light and you can both dig. We'll get out of here quicker. Okay. Don't do that, Stanley. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to hurt you, kid. Nobody. Here, come back with that light. Come on, let's stop kidding around. I'm going to sit down. You'll get all wet. No, yes, I know it busts the chair here. Oh, for the love of... All right, all right. There. Yeah, now let's go. <gasps> now what's the matter? Stanley, you didn't sit in this chair, did you? You kidding? Pete? What's the matter? Somebody's been sitting in it. The seat's still warm. And she dropped the flashlight and it rolled down into the hole we've been digging. The light went bouncing down and down and down and down. Hundreds of feet we could watch it, twisting and turning and lighting up the sides of a deep, smooth shaft that seemed to have no bottom at all. And there we were in the dark down in Beezer's cellar, the darkness pushing down on us. There was a sound somewhere, way far off, that seemed to come up to us from the bottomless pit we had opened. And I swore. I lit a match. Pete and Marlena were leaning over the edge of the hole. Marlena jumped back and she started screaming. And she wouldn't stop till I slapped her face a couple of times. I said, cut it out. Do you want all the cops in the state to come running? She grabbed me by the arm. She was yammering like a baby. She passed out cold. Only the quick grab that Pete made kept her from falling right down the hole. Well, Pete and I slapped some of the dirty water in her face. And pretty soon she sat up. And she started to cry. And it started to rain. Look, Pete said. Look. I don't go for this, Stanley. Scared of ghosts. Oh, nuts. There's no ghosts, but I think we can find a better place to bury our dough than Mr. Beezer's cellar. Let's get out of here, please. Let's get out of here. Cut it out, Marlene. No, no, let's get out of here. I tell you, I know. You saw a reflection of the match down this old well. Well? Sure, that's what it is. It's a well. <laughs> Some of these old houses had a well right in the cellar. I, I remember it from when I was a kid. And we busted into the well. I saw eyes looking at me. Cut it out. She didn't either. We'd have been in a swell fix if we dropped the suitcase down the well. Yeah, I'll say we would. Yeah, let's dig another hole. Shut up, Marlena. Let's get out of this. I'm getting soaked. Yes, let's get out of here, Stanley. Go on, you two, if you want. I'm going to get this suitcase planted. Come on, Pete. Yeah. Hurry up, Stanley. I'll hurry. Wish you hadn't dropped that light. Please, I'm scared. All right, all right. Cut it out. Hurry. Don't make so much noise. You know something, Stanley? Huh? Uh, know what? Something's happened. What are you whispering about? Listen, Stanley, I, I've been all around the walls of this place, and that busted place in the walls where we came down ain't there anymore. What are you? Well, I'm telling you, Stanley. Light a match and look for yourself. And I struck a match. And I shielded it carefully in my hands. And I looked around the walls of Beezer's cellar in the drizzling rain... And you know what? There wasn't anything out of that place that I could see. The walls, all four of them, was as smooth as glass. And 
come from way, way down deep in the earth. I could just see a little bitty gleam from that flashlight. And I thought to myself, I... I see what Marlena meant. It, it does look like eyes now, don't it? Down at the bottom of a musty old cellar in the middle of the night and a hole in the floor that goes down, I haven't got any idea how far. And rain and a hysterical woman and a suitcase with $82,000. No way to get out of the place. Great, huh? Well, you can explain anything, can't you? A hole in the floor. Sure, that was a well. The eyes she thought she saw. Sure, that was a flashlight reflecting on the water down there. And the way we couldn't get out. Well, maybe the wall wasn't as busted down as I thought it was when we got into the place. Maybe we didn't notice how smooth the walls was. Yeah, sure. But how are you going to explain that chair seat being warm when Marlene sat down on it? want to come here in the first place. That old guy scared the life out of me. There's no such thing as ghosts. You pick a swell time to make a statement like that, boy. Well, there ain't. Maybe there is no ghosts. But there are other things. Like what? I don't know. Like things that come up out of the ground. I'll cut it out. Well... Give me a cigarette, Pete. You're going to sit here all night in the rain? What'll I do? Fly out of here or something? Give me a match. Wait, I'll spit for you. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Wait till morning. We'll find a way out then. I wonder if we could reach the top of the wall if we stood on that chair. Well, I don't know. You wouldn't get me to touch that chair for a million dollars. It was warm. Ah, that don't signify nothing. As to me. What about the suitcase? What? What'd you do with it? I'm sitting on it. Is it warm? Hot as a pistol. Oh, cut it out. Cut it out. Well, I'm scared. Look, babe, I don't like this any too well either. Just sit close to me, please. I'm cold. Well, move over this way. Well, don't worry, kids. In another couple of months, we'll come back and pick up our little prize package here. We'll be warm for life. All of us. If we ever get out of here. Ah, come on. <laughs> You do that, Pete? No. What was it? I don't know. Stanley. Oh, well, wait a minute, Stanley. I think I know what it was. What? Wait. Stan? What? Come here. Careful now. In the damp darkness, I moved toward the sound of Pete's voice. He stuck my hand and put it on the edge of the hole I dug. See? What? A couple of bricks fell in the hole. Oh. Marlene, get back from the edge. What is this? Move back, honey. Oh, Light a match, Stanley. You got him. You like one. All right, stand back a little. Handing the light from the match before it fizzled out in the rain. I saw what had made the sound. Two or three bricks had got loosened at the edge of the hole I dug. Had fallen in. And as I looked before the match went out, two more sagged and fell downward into that bottomless pit. Get back, Marlena, I yelled. Pete lit another match. Look out! The crack yawned open, and with a crash, a half a dozen more bricks tumbled into the hole. Below us, I could see the feeble glow of the flashlight way down there. It seemed to me the things crawled far, far below us in that horrible pit. Pete and I dragged Marlena away to the wall. There was a rumble, and the mouth of the pit grew bigger. It seemed that the glow from down there was growing stronger. We sat there, huddled against the slippery walls, frozen cold with terror. Another section of the floor fell in. The whole floor is gone. Come on, we got to get out. Marlena sobbing and Pete and I scrambling at the slippery walls. There wasn't a chance. Then the rumbling stopped for a second. We flattened ourselves against the bricks. In the light that came up from down there, I could see Pete's staring eyes and the tears of fright shining on Marlena's cheeks. I said, we got to get out of here. Help me up the wall, Stanley. Take no use to try, boys. You can't get out. And I looked up. And there, sitting comfortably on the edge of the cellar wall, grinning at us in the light that flowed up from the pit in the cellar floor, 
It was the old man Marlena and I had heard at the roadside restaurant. The old man had told the lurid story about Beezer's cellar. Ain't no use to try. You're stuck. Oh, help, help. Don't hoop for the holler, lady. Look, old man, give us a hand, will you? I heard tell of a fella long time ago that got down into this here cellar. Just like you done. Well, give us a hand. The floor is gone. I know. The floor fell in with him, too. Well, help us. He killed a fella down towards Manitou. And he come and hid here in the cellar. Give us a hand out of here. And the same thing happened to him. Never did find his body. <laughs> More floor falling in, hey? Come on, give us a hand up out of here. Help us. <laughs> know what's down there? Fire and destruction. Listen, old man. Touch, boy. You know you hadn't ought to shot that poor fella at the bank up there in Chicago. Uh, Murder's bad. Uh, listen, we got a lot of money down here with us. I know it. You're criminals. Uh, we'll we'll split it with you. Don't want no part of stolen money, bub. Oh, <laughs> Ain't much more left, is there? They'll never find your body. Now listen, you old now, boy. don't call me, hey, Bob. put that pistol down. I'm... That won't do you no good, son. Too bad. Uh, listen, mister, for, for the... Uh, look, there's a woman down here. Yeah. Criminal? Like you too, boy. Uh, uh, but look. Uh, look out, Marlene. Oh, stop me. There's many things not to stop. Here, Marlene. Here. I kind of figured you was listening to me back there at Saldweddle's stand. Kind of figured you'd come a-kiting out here to the cellar. <laughs> Mister, listen to reason. Please just reach down and give us a hand. Kind of figured I'd come along and watch and see what had happened to you. Mighty interesting. Oh, if I could get my hands on you. You can't. Not unless I let you. You can't do this to us. We are people. We are. Help. Please, mister, I beg you. No, lady. No use of hollering. The wages of sin is death, I always say. You robbed and you murdered. So you got to be punished, see? You, you can't sit there and watch us die. <laughs> Another hunk of the floor is going. You better move over to one side. Oh, I'm going to get that old man. Uh, Put down your pistol, sonny. I'll get him. I told you, it ain't no use. Please, please don't. Get him. Get him. Listen, Sheriff, I... Uh... I ain't no sheriff. I'm just a feller interested in seeing justice done. I recognized you back there at the restaurant. And I thought to myself, I thought... Well, I'll just tow these people here over to the cellar, and we leave things take their course. Uh, look out, Marlena. Oh, Haven't you any pity, man? Not much. Not much for thieves and murderers. He's crazy, Stanley. There's an insane asylum across the river there someplace. He's escaped from there. No, son. I ain't insane. Listen, what would you give to get out of there? You you can have half the money. Ain't much time for bargaining. Give it all to him, Stanley. That's better. You ought to be willing to give up all the money to save your life. Oh, yes, yes, yes. If I was in a fix like that, I'd give anything I got. Well, we won't. Yes, we will. Floor getting hot down there. <laughs> Mighty interesting. Well... All right, you can have all the money. Help us out. I know you don't, Stanley. Hang it up. Stanley, how do we know he'll help us? Wait, don't give it to him. Take it. No, 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 no. And Pete leaped at the suitcase I was handing up to the old man. His fingers just touched the edge of the bag when another section of floor gave way right under him. He fell down and down and down and down, twisting and turning into the fire that kept coming higher and higher up the shaft, reaching for us. And the old man took the bag and 
set it down on the edge of the cellar. See? That might have been you, fella. Or you, lady. Well, help us out of here. It's good riddance. He was the one that shot the fellas at the bank up in Chicago. Uh, good riddance, I always say. Are you going to help? You're, you're right in the nick of time. Here. Grab a hold of my hand, lady. I'm afraid. Uh, you dumb lady. Uh, Bust her, mister. Uh, oh. Uh, there you are. Just as right as rain. All right. Now, you. And as the strong arms of the old man lifted me up over the lip of the cellar wall, the last section of the floor below us fell away into the fire. And just as if a play or something was over, the flames died down. First they were yellow, then purple, and then they just went out. Elena grabbed my arm. Where did he go, Stanley? Where did he go? I don't... Hey, old man! Hey! Stanley! Come on, let's get out of here. Oh! oh. What's this? Oh. Marlena! What? He didn't take the money. It's right here. And so I picked up the suitcase, and Marlene and I hacked our way through all that underbrush back to the road. We were just opening the door to the car to get in, go away from Beezer's cellar, when there was sawed-off shotguns in our faces, and lights. I could see the state cop's badge behind the light. He laughed and said, Come on, kids, we're going for a ride. And it's very comfortable. Here in the little iron room at Stateville. Then I hear that Marlena's all right down there at the women's prison at Dwight. She can stay there for 20 years. Me? Well, I'm going to move. They got a tight little room here for people to get mixed up in murders. Little room you can walk into, but you can't walk out. All modern conveniences. Electricity and everything. Well, the old fellow said the wages of sin is death. And I... I guess I'd rather be here than in Beezer's cellar. I really am pretty grateful to the little old fellow. The little old fellow with the six fingers on the hand that pulled me out. Today's Quiet Please story is Beezer's Cellar. It was written and directed by Willis Cooper, and the man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And Lotta Stavisky played Marlena, Warren Stevens was Pete, and the six-fingered old man was Charles Eggleston. As usual, music for Quiet Please is played by Albert Berman. Now for a word about next week, Willis Cooper. Thank you for listening to Quiet Please. Next week, I have a story for you called And Jeannie Dreams of Me. And so, until next week at the same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. Now, a listening reminder. Today, David Harding Counter Spy is dedicated to Employ the Physically Handicapped Week. Be sure to tune in. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.